Hello everyone, today we'll talk about the most interesting topic. All the subscribers constantly ask me, Artem, tell us about glass units, we need to know everything about it. And today I will tell you how to choose the right glass unit, no matter what it is, a window or a large panoramic stained glass window or a sliding window, what are the rules for choosing a glass unit. It will be very interesting, I will answer all your questions at once. That's what a glass unit is. It is such a product consisting of three panes of glass, two chamber glass unit or two panes of glass, single chamber glass unit. And the first thing you should decide is what kind of glass unit you will have, single or two chamber one. A two chamber one is about 50% warmer than a single chamber one. So I recommend installing two chamber glass units in residential buildings, apartments and houses. We have installed such glass units on large formats 6x3, and there is nothing wrong with that. Of course, it's very heavy and it's hard to install it, but it's much warmer than a single chamber one. Let's move on. When you have chosen a glass unit, for example a two chamber one, we need to choose the formula of the glass unit. You have to determine the thickness of the panes and the width of the spacer frames. As for the thickness of the panes and the frames. For this purpose, there are special tables that are developed by manufacturers of glass units that meet the standards. This is very important because you can't use thin glass on a large glass unit. What could it lead to? This can lead to the formation of a lens, when the glass under atmospheric pressure bends like this and distorts the reflection on the glass from the outside. I'll show you what it looks like in real life. A horrible picture. I had experience like this, it all ends sadly. You will need to change the glazing completely, so choosing the thickness of the glass is extremely important, probably the key thing to do. There are special tables that indicate the width and height of the glass unit and whether the glass should be 8 or 10 millimeters. Glasses come in 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12 millimeters. So the thickness of the glass is chosen depending on the size of the glass unit. In addition to the thickness of the glass, there is the width of the distance frame and it's also important. A thin frame cannot be placed on large glass units. Frames come in 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22 and 24 millimeters. That's why I have these tables. Who needs it? Write to me in the comments. I will provide all the tables. You'll see what kind of glass and frame to choose. So that you could check whether the contractor has chosen the right formula. Otherwise, this can lead to sad consequences. In addition to forming a lens, the glass panes can even stick together and I had such cases on the site. This is not noticeable at first, but if you come closer, you can see purple stains. It turns out that the panes stuck together and this is solved by replacing the glass unit. Therefore, I want to emphasize once again that this is extremely important. Everything starts from this. So, we have chosen the thickness of the glass and the frame. As for different panes, a little glass here, a big glass there, a bigger one here, a smaller one there, formulas may be different, but the thickness of the glass on neighboring glasses should not differ much. Let's say 12 millimeters and 10 millimeters, or 10 and 8, or 8 and 6. If you have a huge glass 12 millimeters thick and a small glass 4 millimeters, it's going to be awful. Because the color will be different. The thicker the glass, the more its color changes. So the thickness should be similar. 6 and 8, 8 and 10. Be sure to keep it in mind. So when we have chosen the glass, we need to decide whether it will be ordinary or clear. Ordinary glass has a greenish color and it's even green on the end. On 4 mm glass, it's almost invisible because it's thin. When the glass gets thicker, 
6, 10, 12 millimeters, it turns green. And you need to understand that a small glass unit with 4 millimeter glass seems transparent. But if you put together a huge glass unit out of 3 tens, it will be green. I know what I'm talking about. I installed such glass units. They are green. The color is clearly green. Therefore, if we want to ensure maximum transparency, it is worth considering the use of clear glass. There can be either three clear glasses or one or two clear ones. You decide based on the price and how much you want to reduce this green color. Clear glass is glass to which special substances are added. There's a reduced silicon content, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, not silicon, but iron. I don't really know much about glass production, but the fact is that it's more transparent. There are samples like this to compare. Here, look. That's what it looks like. Here's regular glass. Here's clear glass. Look at these glass samples. As you can see, there's a big difference between ordinary and clear. With this thickness, 10 millimeters, that's clearly green. Here's a better view from the end. Clear and green. It's an essential point. But there is only one glass, and imagine that there are three such glasses. It would all be even more green, so this is a point to consider. Of course, clear glass is more expensive. It is about 40-50% more expensive than regular glass. By the way, this glass is produced here in Russia. This is planable crystal vision glass. This is the only clear glass that is produced in Russia by AGC. All the other clear glasses are European and very expensive. But planable crystal vision has a relatively normal price. So, when we have decided whether it will be clear or regular glass, we proceed to the choice of coating on the glass. Now technologies allow particles of silver and other metals to be applied to glass, which greatly increases its characteristics. The coating can have different functions. One coating holds the heat inside the room and doesn't let it go outside, as if reflecting. The second coating provides sun protection, that is, it prevents the sun from scorching hard on the glass, and there is no effect of a steam room inside, it reflects the sun's rays, it's called sun protection glass. And there is a multifunctional coating, it doesn't let the heat out and protects from the sun at the same time. There are such glasses as well. After we have made our decision, let's start choosing the coating. So, how to choose the right coating? In a standard glass unit, energy saving coating is used in 99.9% .9 of cases. The so called eye glass, it should always be used by default. If we look at the glass unit, this is the room side, and the coating of silver particles is applied from the inside on the inner glass. It doesn't change the transparency of the glass. It's completely invisible. It doesn't add any mirroring. It's just a thin coating that reflects heat indoors. So, eyeglass is a must-have anyway, even if you don't want the extra coating. It greatly increases the thermal performance of the glass unit. And it's not expensive. It has almost no effect on the price. So, now we know that we need to use eyeglass. The next point is multifunctional glass. It is placed outside. That is, eyeglass is internal and multifunctional glass is external. If we put a multifunctional one, it has a double effect. It works like eyeglass. It doesn't let the heat out, but it also protects from the sun. So if we put multifunctional glass on the outside, we can leave it that way. But we can put another energy-saving glass on the inside. You'll have two coating circuits, and you'll actually get double thermal protection and plus sun protection. It's a very warm glass unit, and it's not that expensive. So, let's talk about multifunctional coating. 
you should realize that this coating can be applied to both clear glass and regular green glass. Also, for example, Guardian, Guardian's line of products, I find them to be the most optimal. Why? Because their coating is applied not to green glass, but to the so-called extra clear glass. It's something between clear and regular glass, a lighter glass, and it's cool because the color rendition is very good. What are the cons of multifunctional glass? Well, for some it's a disadvantage, but for others it's not. I think the disadvantage is mirroring. Any multifunctional coating, any surface with sun protection has mirroring. And the higher the sun protection, the more mirrored glass you get on the outside. So if you decide to install sun protection, mirroring is something you have to put up with. And then the question arises, how mirrored is it? How to choose this glass? Besides mirroring, it can also be in different colors. Bronze, blue, green, and so on. It could be neutral, transparent, could be some titanium, silver. There are many types of multifunctional glass and there are several options for choosing it. How does a customer decide which glass to choose? He must know what color it's going to be. The easiest option is pieces of glass like this. Just a little book, for example. These are pieces of glass of different colors. And we look at it like this. For example, bronze glass. It has a bronze color. But it's better to watch it all in the sun, outside. And it will then be as similar as possible. Go outside and look but it's also very hard to guess the shade on one glass. That is, you can get a rough idea. Is it green, blue, or transparent, or how mirrored it is? But if you need to understand exactly, it's better to order such samples. We have them. And it's not a big problem. It's an A4 format. It's a single chamber glass unit in which the outer glass is multifunctional. There can be a lot of such samples with different types of multifunctional glass. How do you do it? You choose some kind of line. For example, we want a neutral shade with no color. But we don't understand what mirroring we should choose. And we pick a few pieces from the lines like Guardian Neutral 60x40, 7041, 70NT, well, different kinds of mirrored glass. We make such samples of A4 format. We go outside and look at them with the customer, with the architect, what shade we like more, what mirroring suits us, and so on. We chose it and that's it. After that, the choice of glass in terms of color is finished. And of course, there are also options with coating, which is applied to the clear glass, like AGC, Crystal Vision. So there could be multifunctional glass with coating on Crystal Vision. This glass is even cooler when we also apply coating on the clear glass. Why is it important to apply coating on clear glass? Why is it better? Because from the outside we see the mirroring on the glass or some shade, but it's important to us that from the inside we see everything as transparent as possible and there is no distortion of color. So the trees would be green, all the colors would be there, the sun would be yellow, and so on. That's why a good multifunctional glass, say Guardian or AGC, based on clear glass, is as good as possible at rendering color. So from the inside, everything is transparent. So, we have chosen the type of glass. The last thing you need to choose is the spacer frame. Here, as you can see on this sample, the standard spacer frame is between the two glasses. What does a glass unit look like? Two glasses with a spacer frame between them. It's aluminum by default, with a molecular sieve inside. It's needed to absorb moisture that can form inside the chamber of the glass unit. Next comes the secondary ceiling, butyl, and the primary ceiling. Here it is, between the frame and the glass. So, this spacer frame is aluminum by default. But I try not to use it now. 
and in 95% of cases we put a warm frame. The warm frame is a plastic frame. It can be black, white or gray. Often we put black. It looks cool because nowadays everybody loves dark colors. Black, dark gray and these frames when they are light colored look terrible but black looks cool. The glass unit has the weakest zone, the edge zone. A lot of heat comes out here and if you put an aluminum frame there is even a risk of condensation on the glass unit. You can see a lot of videos and photos on the internet when drops form at the bottom and the edges of the glass unit in severe frost because the temperature at the edge of the glass is different from that in the center. The dew point shifts and a warm frame eliminates these things. So it's better to always put a warm frame, for example in black, and you will be happy. Anyway, almost everything has been chosen. Now let's talk about safety. It is desirable that the glass should be tempered because ordinary raw glass shatters into large pieces when broken and may cut someone. So if you make it tempered, at least the glass on the edge sides, inner and outer ones, it will crumble into tiny pieces when broken. If we're talking about a large format glass unit, then it's necessary to temper it on both sides. If the glasses are small, you can make them raw, but I always prefer tempering. Don't skimp on it. It's not that much money. Safety is more important. That's why we almost always install tempered glass. You can also choose a triplex. Triplex is two panes of glass glued together on a film. You can install it. It also provides security, but triplex is thicker and the glass unit will be more massive, heavier and more difficult to install. Triplex is usually installed not for the purpose of safety, the glass can be tempered, it will be even cheaper than triplex, but it's necessary to ensure a more complex penetration into the room. That is, you can break the tempering and walk in, and the triplex can also be broken, but you have to try hard to get inside the room. But triplex has certain disadvantages. First, it's more expensive, and second, triplex is often made from raw glass. You can make a triplex out of two tempered glasses, then it's very cool, but it's even more expensive. What other benefits does tempered glass have? Besides being hard to break, it's also chamfered on the edges and then tempered. Therefore, the probability of some micro cracks on the edge during installation or over time from a temperature difference in tempered glass is practically zero. Even if there is some kind of temperature difference, then everything will crumble rather than a crack will appear. I had cases when the customer wanted triplex and tempering. Triplex was outside and inside and we had a lot of trouble to change these glass units. Because the weight is heavy, the triplex inside is made of raw glass, we put it, pressure builds up, the triplex cracked and had to be replaced all the time. Therefore, on large formats, triplex must be made of tempered glass to minimize the chance of cracks due to its size. But I recommend doing two temperings. Most of the time I do it this way. I rarely use triplex now. Now you know how to choose the right glass unit. You should also understand that the larger the format of the glass unit, the thicker the glass, the more complicated its manufacture, installation and the whole product becomes more expensive. That's why we have a rule in glazing. The bigger, the more expensive. The more panoramic, the more expensive. The more clear the glass, the more expensive and so on. So consider the price and choose your glass units. And as an optimization option, panoramic, divide more often, install cheaper glass. And the price tag can be two or three times different with these options. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like it, write something in the comments, ask a question. So I would be motivated to keep making videos and telling you interesting things. Bye everybody, see you soon. Thank you.